throughout the medieval and Tudor period, there were many different torture methods used by kings and queens to extract information from a prisoner. Torture and execution was used to punish and scare the population into submission, but torture was used at the time as a legitimate way of obtaining information which could be incredibly important. It was allowed and permitted by law, and the Tower of London became one of the most feared sites across England for the use of torture that took place there. One of the most fearful methods used at the Tower was a rack, and this was a device in which prisoners had their arms and legs secured onto the rack by chains and ropes. The rack would then stretch a prisoner, and with each turn of the rack, the victim's limbs would be put under immense pressure and stress, and the bones would snap, joints would dislocate, and ligaments would tear. The terror of the rack was so severe that even the sight of the torture device would be enough for someone to give over information. But there was also another torture device used in conjunction with the rack, and this was the complete opposite. It was known as a scavenger's daughter, and was a device which was created to compress rather than stretch, and this was a strange device which could contort a prisoner. Join us today as we look at the scavenger's daughter, history's most brutal torture method, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The scavenger's daughter as a torture device was used first during the reign of the notorious King Henry VIII. It was used at the Tower of London and was invented by the Lieutenant of the Tower, a man named Sir Leonard Skeffington. At the Tower he was a man who was in charge of keeping high-profile prisoners under lock and key, and his job was responsible for the welfare of some of the most notorious people ever held at the Tower. Skeffington looked after people such as Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, and even the future Queen Elizabeth I. It was his job also to administer torture during the reign of Henry VIII, and if the King wished for it, he would then carry out these requests. But Skeffington would then create his own torture device, the scavenger's daughter, named after him. This device would press and compress the body of a prisoner, and a victim in a painful way, and the body would be forced into the frame, in a way that would cause a huge amount of pain. It was made to work with the rack, and the mangled body of a prisoner would be forced into the device, which would then cause more severe agony. There were two different types of the scavenger's daughter, the first being a pin-star device, which would hold a prisoner inside the metal frame, and the prisoner was then forced to kneel in the pin, which was then tightened, and this would put a lot of pressure on the prisoner's back. This could easily break someone's back, and the other style of device was more of a frame which was shaped like the letter A. With this, the prisoner's head would be strapped to the top of the A-frame, and then their hands were secured to the middle of the device, through some holes at the side. The legs would be then secured to the bottom of the frame, and then the device would fold and swing, which would force the head down and the legs and knees would be forced up, into a sitting position. This was a huge stress placed on the prisoner's muscles, and if they had been placed on the rack, it would cause even more pain and suffering. The victim's head could also then be placed and pushed into a different direction, causing even more strain. But it isn't known that the scavenger's daughter was used a huge amount throughout the centuries. It was very easy for a blacksmith to make this device, and Leonard Skeffington is credited with creating it. In one instance, it was said at the tower that Thomas Meyer was subjected to being put on the device, and he was accused of being involved in linking up with the Irish rebels during the reign of Henry VIII across the sea. He was linked to rebellions, and he denied this, but he was then strapped to the scavenger's daughter in order to extract information from him. He would document his horrific torture ordeal on the wall of his cell inside of the Beecham Tower, where he was held, and he carved, By torture strain my truth was tried, yet of my liberty denied, and he then signed off with his name. But another man who was tortured on the rack, but also the scavenger's daughter, was Thomas Cotton. He was an English priest who was a Catholic, and during the reign of Elizabeth I he would be executed. Elizabeth in her lands would try to solve problems with religion, and would issue her religious settlement, but Catholics continued to be persecuted throughout the land. Cotton was placed on the rack to get information from him about underground worship, but he was then placed on the scavenger's daughter to get more from him. It's possible he was put in the device, as he did not give over much information on the rack. Another priest named Luke Kirby during Elizabeth's reign was also placed on the scavenger's daughter. The scavenger's daughter was a device which was notorious and brutal, and it compressed the body in such a way that blood would be forced from the nose and ears of the prisoner. It was seen as the perfect complement to the rack, as it would compress rather than stretch, and would be horrific in its punishment. 
There are many more prisoners who were subjected to this, but their story is a lot deep in the archives. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.